All right, how's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Friday. Finally made it out here to the uh, weekend. It is 12.27 p.m. local time here in California. July 25th, 2025 is the date there. Man, we got some earthquake activity showing up into Southern California. Uh, showing up there quite nicely on the seismograph station there in Anza. It looks like a 3.0 earthquake outside of Banning. That is just off the southern branch here of the San Andreas Fault. Looks like we're starting to swarm out here a little bit uh, with these circles lighting up here in the last hour. But that is one of the latest earthquakes there on the map, three-pointer. A couple smaller quakes there previous. We'll continue to watch that because it's starting to ramp up a little bit here. Southern California has been super quiet with all this big movement happening here recently. But looks like we're starting to pick up here uh, down south and across the area of the Carlock Fault Shear Zone northward. You can see, a, see this line of activity here in the last 24 hours. So let's take a look here, see what we got across the globe. A little bit of larger movement striking out here outside of the, uh, well, west of the Macquarie Island region, the 6.2 early this morning, and then a 5.7 aftershock down here. That uh, is on a fracture boundary of the oceanic crust here. Let me show you guys uh, just off the plate boundary, it looks like. Uh, let me check here and see if we got anything stirring up across New Zealand. Most of the time, it normally puts New Zealand uh, into the area of concern, but it, I know last night they had an earthquake out there of a 5 range, 5.0, just off the North Island coast there. Pretty shallow earthquake. Uh, more than likely, that will be associated with... Um, well, it could be the Hikarangi subduction zone. It's a major area that sits right about here. And it uh, looks like it's on the north side of that uh, for that five pointer. 6.2 miles deep there for that uh, earthquake. But overall, definitely uh, got some things moving down here. Uh, keep an eye on the Alpine Fault. That's pretty much uh, you know right along this plate boundary here, west, west side of South Island. Getting quite a bit of earthquake activity around the region recently, so watch that closely. Uh, either way, it's a moderate to uh, decent uptick here in earthquake activity across the globe. Let's go ahead and check up north here across this area of Russia, just off the coast here of Russia. One more earthquake being reported, it looks like today. A little 5.2. Well, I shouldn't say little because it's a moderate quake in terms of magnitudes. That's the only one that's shown up here on the map, but I'm sure there's a few more of smaller magnitude in the mix there. Uh, Japan region still seeing some earthquake activity down here across the area south of the Nankai Trough. I don't see any major uptick going on. Uh, this one here pretty shallow. Uh, back behind the um, oh, one of the portions down here of the Nankai Trough, the swarming area has been uh, it was down here. So still kind of watching this area of Japan for some some movement. Got a lot going on out here. Uh, see the Alaska area, handful of smaller quakes in the three range. Nothing big going on up there today. Uh, looks like an earthquake there across Mount Rainier as well. A little point eight. Things uh, tapering off in terms of the multitude of counts out there. But uh, let's go double check that and see what we got from the PNSN network here. By the way, trimmer counts were uh, dwindling as well at uh, 41 epicenters of trimmer into the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. So let's go check out Mount Rainier here real quick, see what we have. Uh, 1,032 earthquakes now in total, for a total tally for that earthquake swarm that's uh, been stirring up up there. Uh, as far as the seismograph stations go across this area, we'll double check that and see. There's an earthquake right there, the one that just showed up, little point eight. A couple other smaller ones in there as well. This is outside interference making these um, signals, but the earthquakes are going to be well-defined little spikes. And like I said, this here showed up as a little point eight. That's on this seismograph station, but we will check this one here it's towards the northern end of that swarm at that volcano. Showed up nicely there as well. It looks like this one does a pretty good job of picking up uh, even some of the smaller microquake activity there across Mount Rainier. It's all pretty much small microquake activity, but 
uh, it goes to pick up some of these other ones that the station other station is not picking up but that's gonna be a little point eight and as you can see uh, it actually looks a little bit more active out here today quite a few little spikes out there even some really small ones uh, it looks like the USGS though is only uh, reporting three earthquakes and uh, two, only two from today but uh, there's definitely a bunch more in there some of those are hard to pinpoint in terms of the um, accurate magnitude location and the depth there for that uh, little earthquake on the seismograph stations but uh, at least they're reporting uh, some of them out there but no major change in terms of any uptick just a little bit of a smaller microquake activity there today that uh, has been ongoing for a little while now Northern California, a handful of earthquakes there from yesterday and today, 2.4, 7.4 miles deep here into the, uh, it looks like around the Honeydew Fault Zone. Bay Area, pretty quiet, aside from the Clear Lake Volcanic Field up there, the hydrothermal plants in full swing. A uh, couple earthquakes here towards the Park Field section of the San Andreas Fault, but not quite. Looks like it just stops right there at the at that um, locked area which is still potentially could be coming up for uh, a six pointer at least they got uh, regular occurrence intervals of uh, 20 to 22 years here where we see a six pointer and our last one was back in 2004 so definitely uh, coming up here Yellowstone National Park not a whole lot going on up north oil fields out here pretty active today it looks like across the uh, Permian Basin outside of Midland Quite a bit of uh, shaking going on out there in the uh, fields, oil fields. Uh, let's see what else we have here. Got a little 2.4 in Kentucky from last night. Looks like it's on the border there. Nothing major happening across the eastern portion of the country. Some earthquake activity there across Hawaii right now. Uh, but really nothing big. Uh, I do want to show you guys here real quick. I know we've had you know a decent amount of earthquake activity here in the last 30 days and some large magnitudes at that this is just the last 30 days look how many large events above 6.0 we've had that's quite a bit <laughs> man quite a bit um wow so let's go ahead and um i want to check here and see what we've had here for 6.0 and above since the beginning of the year right and get a total tally because I, it looks like we're starting to catch up here in terms of the average number of quakes out here per year oops so we'll do that and we'll just um uh, do the custom mark here six and then we're just going to search the whole world here take a look at these magnitudes so so far this year which uh I think we're halfway we're further past the halfway point there for the year um, we got seven magnitude sevens now seven magnitude sevens okay so on average each year we should see 15 of those between 7.0 to 7.9 this is just on average some years we see less some years we see more right now at seven we're not even we're just one away from the half pretty much the halfway point here but close close to about half of that so we should see maybe you know another seven more this year but it's sure is seems like it's starting to kick back up here uh in the last couple weeks with some magnitudes of decent you know decency there sevens and sixes uh for the six pointers that would be 60, 60, uh, 65, right? 65 earthquakes of magnitude 6.0 to uh, the 6.9 level. That's probably about halfway there, just about. So we definitely caught up here in the last couple weeks of you know the larger magnitudes here not going to go and count you know 13,000 four pointers and so on and of course you know on average there's over a million 2.0 to 2.9 earthquakes across the world it's pretty crazy but it looks like we're starting to catch up we're just about at the halfway point there for the numbers in terms of being average for these amount uh, for this amount of earthquake activity and magnitude 
And I'm sure we're not done. You guys are going to hear probably some, you know, maybe some sevens coming up. We're still waiting on an eight somewhere. But uh, I do think the longer we go without an eight, uh, likelihood of a nine pointer comes up here. And our last nine pointer was back in uh, 2011. That was the uh, Japan earthquake there. Big one. So a lot of movement going on here. Um, let's see. Just spread out. Look at this. Just a, a huge blob of activity out here from north to south in the last 24 hours. Somewhat. Well, there's 3.1 coming in right now. You know, with this much activity stirring up here, we just have to watch everywhere. There's so much going on right now. Definitely keep an eye here across New Zealand. They got you know some big time movement happening north and south here right now. California just doing its thing out there. A couple smaller earthquakes, but really just minimal. Nothing above. Well, had one 4.5 back in the end of June here, but since the earthquake activity there up in Alaska, the Crow Kamchatka, all this warming over here in Japan. It's been relatively quiet out here. Potentially, you know, just relieving a little bit of, I can't say relieving strain, but it's not to the point of where we're seeing elevated earthquake activity. It just seems like when things really happen over here, things kind of back off in terms of being a little bit quieter across this area of the Pacific Plate. But uh, we'll definitely watch it. I mean, that's a three-pointer off the San Andreas Fault, which continues to build up, you know, it's building up some steam for the next big earthquake out here. It could happen at any given time, so. There's one out in Nevada there, little 3.1 this morning. All right, uh, let me take a look here at the big island of Hawaii. See what's going on for the Kilauea Volcano. Did I turn off the bells? Yes, I did, okay. Um, inflation chart is what I want to look at. This gives us a good indicator of what's going on down below and still rising here. This is the inflation chart, electronic tilt at the Kilauea summit and east rift zone over the past month. Each inflation event leading up to an eruption and then that's depletion, uh, rinse and repeat here. So we're on our way to another eruption here in a number of days probably got uh, oh, I don't know we still got a, a little ways to go before we see that next one so nothing new on that uh, space weather activity looks like almost an M flare here overnight C flare upper C flare a couple of them uh, so things are starting to kick up a little bit across the Sun uh, let's see we got a 40% chance here for some M flare activity X flare around five percent let's see what we got here for these sunspots there's uh, a number of them out here but not a whole lot of uh, super complex ones this one here is just dying off same for this area uh, if I had to pick one if you guys maybe pick one I'd probably watch this area back over here I guess maybe within this range as well uh, but I don't see anything that's going to produce any X flare activity or anything, uh, you know, significant. No major auroras there in the forecast. It looks like coming up here on July 27th, a little shot there uh, of some aurora activity, but uh, really not expecting much out there. Quick glance at the next close approach asteroids here to the planet. Got uh, one coming in today, 304 miles or 304,000 miles. If it's if it's 304 miles from the planet, yeah, we... Yikes, that'd be super close. But this one's pretty safe there, 304,000 miles. 110-foot airplane size, newly discovered. But uh, aside from that, everything looks fairly safe out there. Lots of airplane size asteroids are coming close to the planet. Not really close, but uh, within within a distance there. I've uh, got a marginal risk for some severe weather across my neck of the woods. Well, up in the mountains above me here. Uh, looks like mainly due to some wind in that 5% chance there. Tornado threat limited up north here across North Dakota and portions of Kansas, eastern Kansas there outside of Wichita. Looks like they might have some spinning water vapor today. Uh, but that's... Uh, 
Yeah, this area's got a 70% chance of storms again today. Even down here in the valley, it looks like we got some chances. So we'll have to watch that. Wouldn't mind a nice thunderstorm down here. Anyway, folks, um, enjoy your Friday. The seismograph stations out there look pretty quiet for now. But uh, we'll definitely keep an eye on things. A lot of movement stirring up overnight uh, and technically over the last couple weeks as well. Could be leading to something much bigger out here. It's, or it could just be playing catch up. You know, a couple weeks back here before all this activity stirred up, we were uh, well below the halfway point for being average in terms of the number of uh, large earthquakes out here. So we've caught up and uh, we'll continue to get some large ones here throughout the year. Could be seeing something in terms of mega quake activity. It's got to come up here sooner than later. Uh, eight pointers normally occur once a year and um, if not once a year maybe once every other year and our last one was back in 2021 for an eight pointer so could be coming up here anytime the question is you know where all right have a good one we'll see you guys out here uh, a little bit later for the friday night update take care folks enjoy your day